and Ian for um, that um, that talk. Um, I think it's fair to say they saved the best till last um, <laughs> in terms of for this conference. Um, well, I'm del delighted to be here to talk about integrated reporting, um, in particular in terms of SIPFA's um, recent joint report with the International Integrated um, Reporting Council. Um, the report, well, focusing on value creation um, in the public sector, was launched um, a few weeks ago. Um, it's a report which was sponsored by um, the World Bank, and it's a report aimed at leaders within um, the public sector in terms of raising awareness about what integrated reporting actually is, what it means for the public sector. It shows some examples of um, good practice, or at least in terms of public organisations, um, either adopting or implementing um, integrated reporting. I think it's fair to say, in terms of in comparison with the, the corporate sector, it is very much the new kid off the block um, for the public sector. Um, Organisations are experimenting um, with the approach, but to, to great effect in terms of, Philippe talked about um, the thinking and influencing the way of doing business and, and those organisations that have actually implemented um, integrated reporting and integrated thinking have shown different results and have actually restructured the way that they do business and in terms of set their priorities and objectives. So very briefly, over the next 10 minutes, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the case for change. So why, why should organisations in the public sector adopt um, or think about adopting integrated reporting and integrated um, thinking? I'll skip over a little bit in terms of an explanation about it because I think Philippe um, covered that quite well. Some of the benefits to the public sector in relation to integrated reporting and thinking the fundamental uh, concepts and some of the principles behind that. And then just to talk briefly about some of the initiatives that we're undertaking in 2017 um, between the International Integrated Reporting Council and SIPFA through its pioneer network for um, public services. So thinking about the case for change, we've heard a lot about the external environment over the, the past two days, and I can't really can't compete with that, but I think it's fair to say, and if we reflect on the public sector, around the world, it, in terms of spending, accounts for about a third of uh, GDP. Um, in some countries, it's 50%, so it's actually big business. So if governments are expecting the corporate sector pr to produce um, high quality um, reports, then governments themselves should be producing those um, high quality reports and setting an example um, of practice. We're aware in terms of public money supports economic growth around infrastructure building, providing educational opportunities, health and welfare um, services. So, in terms of, but it's not just thinking about the now, it's also thinking about the future. And integrated reporting allows um, organisations to think in the short term, the medium and the long term. So just giving you an example um, of um, a public sector that's certainly thinking about the long term, the Welsh Government have just introduced um, a, future, um, a Futures and Wellbeing um, Act and that means that every government policy now has to be forward-looking and to be thinking about the, the future sustainability, um, both economically, um, in terms of social um, uh, sustainability, as well as environmental sustainability. And the auditors in Wales have a real challenge because they've been given a duty to, to actually audit um, against that. I must admit I haven't kept up with developments, but I'm sure it is quite a quite a challenge. I think it's fair to say in terms of um, there is a drive for more scrutiny and transparency and for data to be put in the uh, public domain and certainly in my lifetime I've never seen so much data out there for the public to to actually scrutinize and consume. 
The constraints on financial resources in the public sector continue and listening to uh, the talks over the past two days are likely to um, for the next few years. In terms of organisational complexity, I heard the other day about um, transformation of back office functions um, across the Canadian government and how complex carrying out such a pro project like that is. And we're in an environment of constant change. So I think in terms of financial reporting, we've reached a tipping point in relation to it's no longer good enough to think that the balance sheet will give you a whole picture of an organization's performance. And I think, as Philippe said, in terms of it's important, more important in terms of to look at both the financials but also in terms of the qualitative information. So to make the links from inputs through to the outcomes and service um, delivery. An integrated reporting provides you with such a framework to, to do that. And there's an increasing demand for frameworks and tools to help organisations to, to develop that. In terms of integrated reporting, it can address sometimes different um, diverse stakeholders and, and audiences in terms of and also meet um, many broader um, accountability requirements, particularly of um, parliaments. It takes account of multiple inputs. The framework itself is built on the basis of six capitals. So looking at a human capital, intellectual capital, social and relationship capital, as well as, for example, the um, financials, and bringing all of those together and thinking about how each element contributes to the contribution, or indeed in terms of how an organization creates value and reports on, on that. An organization which is actually featured within the uh, publication, Crown Estate, um, gives an example how they've created a number of KPIs, key performance indicators, to develop their total contribution built up from those six capitals, but also looking externally at the social, economic, and environmental um, environment. Very, very quickly, this isn't my slide. Philip may recognize this from the International Integrated Reporting Council, but this gives you an idea in terms of the direction of travel of integrated reporting in the corporate um, sector. Over a 1,000 organizations are adopting IR, Indeed, 50% of chief executive officers or chief financial officers say that they're actually moving towards integrated reporting and thinking. 750 participating networks and 205 businesses in Japan have adopted integrated reporting. In the public sector, we are way, way behind that. Yet I would say it's much, it's even more important in the public sector, given the multiple um, services that we deliver and the multiple outcomes that we're expected to deliver to. So what is it? As Philip said, it's about thinking, uh, thinking differently about how you develop your strategies within business, develop your governance arrangements, your business planning processes within businesses. It makes you um, focus on planning um, in terms of through the business planning model um, to work differently through that, but also in terms of to report on creating value. And I think in terms of creating value um, is different, actually, between the public and um, private um, sector. In the public sector, we have a concept of public value. And I was talking earlier about an academic, Mark Moore. Some of you may well be familiar with his work, who wrote a, a piece about uh, public value. And if you want to encapsulate what does that mean, how, how do you capture the value an organization brings? And he gave a very good example. And it was of a street cleaner on a street. If you wanted to think more broadly about the value that that street cleaner brings, well, first of all, that street cleaner has a job, so he's off the unemployment um, register. He's reinvesting his income in the local businesses, in the community, again, adding value. The streets are cleaner, but there is research that shows a direct link between your feeling of happiness and well-being and being in a cleaner environment, 
but also in terms of more importantly there's the, the health prevention aspect in terms of having cleaner streets means that you're not going to pick up various diseases. So if you look at that whole picture, it is much bigger and, and holistic than the street cleaner being on the streets. And that's what organisations, particularly in the public sector, should be um, aiming for capturing. And a couple of organisations who have been adopting the approach have tried to, to show that. Quickly, just moving through some of the benefits, there was a piece of research um, undertaken by the International Integrated Reporting Council that asked 60 organisations, principally in the corporate sector, what are the, the benefits of adopting integrated reporting. 72% of those respondents actually said that it improved decision making in terms of um, their um, businesses. So it allows organisations to think more robustly about their integrated uh, strategies and objectives. It gives a different view in terms of identifying the opportunities and, and gaps. And it brings about um, advantages such as more connected internal and external communication. So organisations are not um, producing different reports in terms of a sustainability report over here, a financial report over there. It's bringing and streamlining, streamlining those um, reports together. Philippe mentions its importance to good governance, and I guess most of you in the room, particularly from the European Court of Auditors, will be aware of the recent um, um, King for report, um, the governance report issued in uh, South Africa. Absolutely instrumental to that report, um, integrated reporting has been used as a framework to support governance within that report. And just um, on that slide is a quote from, from Mervyn Qu uh, uh, King. Public sector organisations are increasingly challenged with maintaining or improving outcomes with the same or reducing services. Well, we all know that. But communicating how and how well prepared they are to achieve this is critical to public accountability. And that's very much reflected both within the integrated reporting framework and also in terms of the King report. This is the, the model that encapsulates, or the framework that encapsulates integrated reporting. I mentioned uh, briefly the, the six capitals, which allows organizations to think about their strategies in a different way. In terms of the input, outputs, and outcome model, I think you're all familiar with, but it just encapsulates the, the businesses in a different way, linking through to business processes and the governance processes. You can find out more about that model within our guide. Very, very quickly, and I realize in terms of where we're up against time a little bit, but some of the guiding principles behind it are, are guiding principles that some of you will, or most of you should be familiar with, uh, not very, very different from the way in terms of where we produce financial reports. So thinking about the concept of materiality, conciseness, reliability and completeness, and consistency and compatibility, comparability. The, these are all principles we've, we're familiar with. In terms of the content elements of the report, in terms of um, those organizations that are producing integrated reports, will have a section um, about their organizational overview and external environment, a piece about their governance arrangements that they employ, the business model, their risks and opportunities, together with their business, their strategy and priorities and how they allocate resources, and indeed are the performance report against, those, against the strategy and the resources, and a future out outlook, and the future outlook um, goes beyond, as I said earlier, in terms of the short term, through to the medium, through to the, the long term. And on a final note, um, you can find our report um, at the website. There are a number of other slides here that explain some of the work that we do um, with the International Integrated Reporting Council, um, with the public sector and our pioneer network. If you want to find out more about that, uh, please do come and talk to me. 
We want to build up a bigger community in relation to that network. So for example, a few weeks ago we had a webinar which talked through our report. Um, early next year we're going to talk, have a web, another webinar which talks about some of the concepts around issues such as materiality, etc. And we also have a group of people who have either adopted or implemented integrated reporting and they will talk through their experiences. So I really do encourage you to, to look at our website to come and talk to me. There are 200 organisations that are linked up to that um, network in well over 100 um, countries. Um, but I think in terms of moving forward, this form of new reporting, particularly in terms of meeting the needs of a broad range of stakeholders, in my view, you know, is the next level we should be as organisations aspiring to. Thank you. Thank you.